Hi, I'm Dan Herbert, course developer and instructor at Point Blank Music School. And in the second of this three-part series, we're going to focus on triggering our loaded samples within Max for Live. We cover many elements of sampling and sound design in our courses in London, Los Angeles and online. To find out more, head over to www.pointblanklondon.com. So in the previous video, we had created this very simple sample playback patch. So let's continue developing it. I'm just going to tidy it up a bit and get rid of these uh, comments. And in terms of how you arrange your objects within the screen, this line indicates the height of the display, but actually you can have objects below that, especially if you don't actually need to view them in the actual device. Right, so what I'm going to do is going to rearrange this a bit more. Let's get rid of that as well. And equally, if you wanted to have your live drop drop file bigger you can resize that just hovering around the bottom right hand corner so this loop function here we clicked on it and it turned on loop there's no way to turn it off at the moment one way to do that would be to use a what's known as a toggle switch and then put in a variable again if I just use another message box here and go into the right inlet of that you'll see when I toggle that on and off it sends a loop one when the toggle is on or loop zero when the toggle is off okay so dollar one always gets replaced by whatever message or number is coming through that but a neater way is to make use of something like live text so again I could type in live dot text or you could go to the sidebar and go down to your max for live objects and drag in live.text and I'm going to now get the inspector scroll down and I'm looking for text off and text on double click there and I'm going to call it loop on and I've got quotation marks either side and loop off and the mode is set to toggle. Okay, so what this now looks like. Again, I need that message down here. Connect it through and into the groove object. So when it's on, it'll be loop one, and when it's off, it will be loop zero. And what I also want to do here is set this number so we can go to negative numbers as well. And we'll be able to reverse the audio. So range, let's come here. And minus 127 will be absolutely fine. Okay, so we've then got minus numbers. And what can be quite useful here is if I just set up some messages, just so we can quickly set to minus 1. And plus 1 just as we demonstrate that. So let's save that. Now to save me having to close the Max window, go back to Ableton, I can also drag and drop the file directly into Max, okay, to test it out. And because we've got the preview button here enabled, I can also then trigger that from the MIDI keyboard and use it just as we would within Ableton. So now let's lock this patch and let's test it out so uh, if i enable the loop and then hit this message box so it's now looping over and over if i hit minus one the reverses and equally if we go minus two or minus 0.5 we can reverse it at different speeds. So let's implement some control from the MIDI keyboard. So I'm just gonna give us a little bit more space by moving this down. Changing these around a bit. So to get MIDI data in, I'm gonna use the note in object. So press N and then note in. And this will give us pitch, velocity, and channel messages. So if I just create a number box by hitting button I and then play my keyboard, let's put one for pitch as well. You can see what's happening. 
then we can see I'm playing middle C 60 with a velocity of 69. When I let go, it sends a note off message with velocity of zero. Okay, so whenever the velocity is above zero, I want it to trigger this message here. And whenever the velocity is zero, I want the sound to stop. So to do this, I'm gonna use a cell object and type in cell zero. Now this kind of works like a filter. Okay, so if it is a zero, it will send a bang out of here. And if it's not a zero, it will basically send the value. Uh, and I'm gonna connect that up to the message so it will trigger the groove object and will start from the beginning each time. So if I play my MIDI keyboard, it triggers that sound. Now the problem is, it's like a one-shot mode, so so I can actually re-trigger it each time, but it plays all the way through the sample. So we need to look at ways to overcome that. What I'm also going to do here is just connect up a K-slider and set a touch screen so you can actually see how I'm triggering the keyboard. There we go. Good. So what we might also want to do is to be able to offer some control of the volume from velocity. So I'm going to create a couple of objects, a multiplication tilde. And then also a fader, live.gain. So we can actually get a visual representation of the signal. Let's come from the output of the fader. Hold down Alt and I can drag over and then delete cables. Out of groove, into this multiplication box object and then that can go up there. Command Y allows you to tidy up your um, patch cords. And then to set it up, I'm just going to do a real kind of cheating way and map the velocity directly to this object here. And that's using scale. OK, so velocity goes from 0 to 127. When it comes to working with audio, then we need to limit that between 0 and 1, essentially. OK, so I'm just going to straight out of the velocity and connect that into the multiplication tilde box. Let's check that. It's always good when you're patching uh, additional parts of your code in that you check as you're going along. Uh, just in case it doesn't work, then uh, it's easier to sort out. And that is only in the left ear. Let's make that mono. So now if I play gently, it's quieter comparison to playing loud so that seems to be working fine we've now got velocity control over it we can also re-trigger it what I'm also missing here is actually when I play up and down the keyboard is it stays at the same pitch so we also want the pitch to control the playback speed so I need to get a bit more space in here I'm just going to drop this down a touch And just being aware to make sure any user interface object is above this horizontal line. So I need to move this gain tilde object up. And we can always sort this out in presentation mode uh, in a bit. To actually control the playback speed, which is this value here, I'm going to create an object called trans ratio. There it is. And this objects based on the relationship of pitch to frequency. This is something we look at in the Ableton Sound Design course when we're covering simpler and the basics of sound. So what I also need to do is create another object and I'm going to minus 60 from that. Now this essentially works like a root note. Okay, so I'm going to connect in from the note in through the minus 60. So when I play at C3, that's when it's going to play back its normal pitch. And then what I want to do is connect it into this box down here. So let's just move this around a bit more. There we go. And again, when you're patching, it can be useful to try and keep objects fairly close together. 
and going down vertically. Right, so now when I play the keyboard, that's middle C. If I play the octave above, or the octave below, you can see how it's affecting this number here. So it works out the ratio when you're transposing, hence the name trans ratio. And what we can also do is just add a, another live number box here, connect it in. And this will be, this will actually control the root note. And so if I get info, so command I, come down here. I want to set the default to 60, so initial enable and then type in 60. Also the unit style, rather than just numbers, if we choose a MIDI, then that will default to C3. And if I put the root note up an octave, then it will play lower, just like it does on any other sampler. 